a wrinkle in time. As they approached the fire, they could see a dark shadow against it. And as they went closer, closer still, they could see that the shadow was a woman. She wore a turban of beautiful pale mauve silk and a long flowing purple satin gown. In her hands was a crystal ball into which she was gazing raptly. She did not appear to see the children, Mrs. Whatsit, Mrs. Who, and Mrs. Witch, but continued to stare into the crystal ball. And as she stared, she began to laugh. And she laughed and laughed at whatever it was she was seeing. Mrs. Witch's voice rang out clear and strong, echoing against the walls of the cavern, and the words fell with a sonorous clang. We are here! The woman looked up from the ball, and when she saw them, she got up and curtsied deeply. Mrs. Watson and Mrs. Who dropped small curtsies in return, and the shimmer seemed to bow slightly. Oh, medium dear, Mrs. Watson said, these are the children. Charles Wallace Murray, Charles Wallace backward, Margaret Murray, Meg felt that if Mrs. Watson and Mrs. Who had curtsied, she ought to, so she did, rather awkwardly. And Calvin O'Keefe, Calvin bobbed his head. We want them to see their home planet, Mrs. Watson said. The medium lost the delighted smile she had worn till then. Oh, why must you make me look at unpleasant things when there are so many delightful ones to see? Again, Mrs. Witch's voice reverberated through the cave. There will no longer be so many pleasant things to look at if responsible people did not do something about the unpleasant ones. <laughs> the medium sighed and held the ball high. Look, children, Mrs. Watson said, look into it well. Que la terre est petite qui la voit des cieux, de Leo. How small is the earth to him who looks from heaven, Mrs. Who intoned musically. Meg looked into the crystal ball, at first with caution, then with increasing eagerness, as she seemed to see an enormous sweep of dark and empty space, and then galaxies swinging across it. Finally, they seemed to move in closer in one of the galaxies. Your own Milky Way, Mrs. Watson whispered to Meg. They were headed directly toward the center of the galaxy, then they moved off to one side. Stars seemed to be rushing at them. Meg flung her arm up over her face as though to ward off the blow. Look, Mrs. Witch commanded. Meg dropped her arm. They seemed to be moving in toward a planet. She thought she could make out polar ice caps. Everything seemed sparkling clear. No, no, medium dear, that's Mars, Mrs. Watson reproved gently. Do I have to, the medium asked. Now, Mrs. Witch commanded. The bright planet moved out of their vision. For a moment, there was the darkness of space, then another planet. The outlines of this planet were not clean and clear. It seemed to be covered with a smoky haze. Through the haze, Meg thought she could make out the familiar outlines of continents, like pictures in her social studies books. Is it because of our atmosphere that we can't see properly, she asked anxiously. No, Meg, you know that is not the atmosphere, Mrs. Witch said. You must be brave. It's the thing, Charles Wallace cried. It's the dark thing we saw from the mountain peak on Uriel when we were riding on Mrs. Watson's back. Did it just come, Meg asked in agony, unable to take her eyes from the sickness of the shadow which darkened the beauty of the earth. Did it just come while we've been gone? Mrs. Witch's voice seemed very tired. Silver, she said to Mrs. Watson. Mrs. Watson sighed. Oh no, Meg, it hasn't just come. It's been there for a great many years. That is why your planet is such a troubled one. But why? Calvin started to ask, his voice croaking hoarsely. Mrs. Watson raised her hand to silence him. We showed you the dark thing on Uriel first, oh, for so many reasons. First, because the atmosphere on the mountain peaks there was so clear and thin you could see it for what it is. And we thought it would be easier for you to understand it if you saw it, well, someplace else first, not your own Earth. 
I hate it, Charles Wallace cried passionately. I hate the dark thing. Mrs. Wetsit nodded. Yes, Charles dear, we all do. There's another reason we wanted to prepare you on Uriel. We thought it would be too frightening for you to see it, first of all, about your own beloved world. But what is it? Calvin demanded. We know that it's evil, but what is it? You have said it, Mrs. Witch's voice rang out. It is evil. It is the powers of darkness. But what's going to happen? Meg's voice trembled. Oh, please, Mrs. Witch, tell us what's going to happen. We will continue to fight. Something in Mrs. Witch's voice made all three of the children stand straighter throwing back their shoulders with determination, looking at the glimmer that was Mrs. Witch with pride and confidence. And we're not alone, you know, children, came Mrs. Watsit, the comforter. All through the universe it's being fought, all through the cosmos. And my, but it's a grand and exciting battle. I know it's hard for you to understand about size, but there's very little difference in the size of the tiniest microbe and the greatest galaxy. You think about that. And maybe it won't seem strange to you that some of our very best fighters have come right from your own planet. And it's a little planet, dears, out on the edge of a little galaxy. You can be proud that it's done so well. Who have our fighters been, Calvin asked. Oh, you must know them, dear, Mrs. What's it said? Mrs. Who's spectacles shone at them triumphantly, and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Jesus, Charles Wallace said. Why, of course, Jesus. Of course, Mrs. Watson said. Come on, Charles, love, there are others, all your great artists. They've been lights for us to see by. Leonardo da Vinci, Calvin suggested tentatively, and Michelangelo. And Shakespeare, Charles Wallace called out. And Bach, and Pasteur, and Madame Curie, and Einstein. Now Calvin's voice rang with confidence. And Schweitzer, and Gandhi, and Buddha, and Beethoven, and Rembrandt, and St. Francis. Now you, Mrs. Watson ordered. <sighs> Euclid, I suppose. And it was in such an agony of impatience that her voice grated irritably. And Copernicus. But what about father, please? What about father? Where are we going to your father? Mrs. Witch said. But where is he? Meg went over to Mrs. Witch and stamped as though she was as young as Charles Wallace. Mrs. Watson answered in a voice that was low but quite firm. On a planet that has given in. So you must prepare to be very strong. All traces of cheer had left the happy medium's face. She sat holding the great ball, looking down at the shadowed earth, and a slow tear crossed, coursed down her cheek. I can't stand it any longer, she sobbed. Watch now, children. Watch. 